Alrighty, here we go. Let's turn down the echo. Alright, so here we are. Happy Wednesday. We've made it another week. What do we got? Today's the 12th. Yesterday was Tuesday, Minnesota primary election day. I uh, hope everybody was able to get your uh, your voice heard, whether you did a, an absentee ballot or went in um, one way or another. You know, that's about all we have, supposedly, so make sure your voices are heard when, um, you know, the elections are coming around. So, uh, let's see here. I've got receipts. There you go. So how's everybody doing tonight? How have we uh, handled our last week? Have things been doing fairly well? How's it going? Let's all give. We'll give it a few minutes. Check in. It was a rainy day today. Boy, you want to talk about some thunder, thunderstorms? Some big boomers came through. Okay, boomer. That's what I was saying to those uh, clouds. Okay, boomer. No. Yeah, it's not often you get these uh, pretty epic thunderstorms, thunder showers during the day. I don't know. Uh, it seems like you usually get this weather towards the evening. Um, overnights and whatnot but anyways uh, tonight we're gonna be tying up uh, some uh, three dollar dip variants uh, the three dollar dip is a, a pattern that is quite effective for trout along um, the upper Madison um, more specifically around a location called three dollar bridge you know, I wonder if I could pull up my pictures from Three Dollar Bridge. Three uh, Dollar Bridge. I bet you I could probably just pull up a YouTube. Three Dollar Bridge, yeah. It's um, Upper Madison River. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, you'll have to Google it. Uh, I think I use up too much bandwidth when I start opening up additional windows and junk. So we'll keep it simple and uh, go from there. Anyways, $3 dip. Um, yeah, let's tie some of these up. We're going to kind of start with uh, a little bit more straightforward uh version of it uh, this is kind of what you what you would typically find um, and we're gonna tie these uh, relatively small today oh, put that one up there I'm gonna kind of warm up to it we're gonna start off well, I'm just gonna yeah we'll start off on a size 16 I'm gonna use a uh, barbless hook this is a uh, caddis curved hook. We'll get um, a couple of these out because these are really, really simple flies. Um, and you know, I guess, I guess when you go to tie flies, tie your own, or you're you're coming up with a pattern. I guess that's one thing to keep into consideration is how how much material and effort goes into tying said fly. Because it was like last week we tied those deer hair mice and. You know, they take forever to tie, and I don't know about you, but I can lose a fly just as fast as I could tie a fly, and I can lose a, a an expensive, easy fly just as easy as I can go the other way around. Anyways, here we go. We got our little caddis curved hook. How about that? We're gonna kind of set it up just a little, a little proud. I like to I keep note of that end up there. <clears throat> Sean Brooks, good evening. All right, so what did I say? What size hook did this start with? We did the 16s. All right. So I'm going to come at it with, um, we're going to try this ADOT uni thread first. And I might bump it down um, to some Vivas 12 uh, aught after this. We'll see how I feel. But super simple, we'll start our thread up front. Get a nice little bite on it. 
And that's it. Yeah, three dollar bridge. Um, my first time out to three dollar bridge. You know, it's it was a. Uh, I don't know. I I almost I wish I would have printed out something to kind of go over the stats and statistics of uh, a three dollar bridge, but. Anyways, so our thread is on. We're going to go in with some uh, fine silver wire. And this is a 13 one hundredths. Capture that wire and we're going to wrap it down, down the bend a little ways. That's it. We'll take our thread, wrap it forward. And that'll be it. Super simple, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. We'll just wrap our wire, our ribbing forward. I'm going to do this as a counter wrap. Take your time. This is one of those. This is one of those patterns that it's so easy to tie. You can actually take your time. When I say take your time, I mean really take your time. Get those ribs just right. And I think that's going to be it right there. Bada boom, bada bing. Make sure that's nice and secured. A few wraps behind there. Excellent. And you guys know me, I like to use my nippers opposed to helicoptering and twisting and breaking things off. And that's it. That's the body. All right, we need our little uh, Deer hair, I don't know what you want to call it, a wing? It's more of a little puff than anything. So, same deer hair that we are using last week. You can see where I... I chomped through most of that, uh, just at that, uh, for those couple of mice um, last week. Uh, so, we'll just take a small little batch of these, about a couple dozen hairs. Um... You don't have to go two bananas with it. We don't have to stack it. We don't have to pack it. None of that shenanigans on this one. It's a keep it simple, keep it clean kind of moment. Here we go. There's too much, but we'll go ahead and just clean that all out. We'll slim this down a little bit as we cleaned. All right, we're going to tie it in by the, not tie it in by the tips, but we're going to tie it in tip side forward. And I've got my thread a little more than an eye's length behind the eye, eye, eye. And I'm looking to see where the, the flare kind of starts to puff out. So... Let's go right about there. I'm going to give that a nice clean trim. And I'm pinching down on that pretty tight. And I'm going to do a wrap behind. I like it. Build that up just a little bit, securing those 
fibers down and we give this a nice little, I don't know, half the body, little puff. Just like so. And then we need to find our crystal flash. Because we're going to start with one quote unquote kind of more or less traditional, and then we're going to go off the beaten path a little bit. But I need to find my crystal flash. Dig, dig, dig. I know I've got more. I think crystal flash has got to be one of the one of the staple flashes um, in the lineup. And a little tip and trick: take the corner of your bag and go ahead and give it a cut. If you don't know this trick yet, here you go. Watch this. You take your bodkin. Or not your bodkin, but your whip finish tool. And you can just pull out one strand. One strand, that's all we need. And don't give that too too hard of a pull. Because you'll stretch it. And it'll lose its twist. And, yeah, that way you chomp it all out of one side. And then after a while, you can get nice clean cuts off the other. So this is one of those... wing additions so let's go ahead and this is what we're gonna do we're gonna lift and lower it up and around to the near side of the hook let's give it a wrap or two and I'm actually gonna go down and around actually nope we're gonna stay up top fold that over to the other side and that's it Little little sprouts hanging out there. Mecca lecca hi, mecca heidi ho. What's up, Jordan? Good evening. And just because I'm picky. The fisher are not that picky about that, but here we go, Yodi Do. Finish that with a nice little clean head. Could go a little bit smaller on the head if you want. Um, I don't know. I kind of like that. So, let's see here. We got Sam, or not Sam, Sean. We got Sean is in the house. We got Jordan in the house. I'm in the house. Who else we got? Who else is in the house? Who is here to with us tonight? Say hiya, howdy, and a helloa. Hola. Uh, buenas noches. Uh, konnichiwa. Um, just trying to think of the different ways I can say hello. Uh, salam. We got Josh. Josh is in the house. How about that weather today, huh? That was some storm. We're going to get a little dab of uh, head cement up front for this guy. We're going to come in with some bone dry. A little, a little set it and forget it. Moment here. Let's get. Our, oh my goodness. Bodkins are going everywhere. Don't forget, I got, the, got this guy with us. He found his home at the end of my bodkin. My. My bench monkey. A little dab. And then we'll set it and forget it. Bonjour. Ah, uh, me and French class, we didn't last very long in high school. There was, uh... I don't know. It didn't last long. I didn't care so much for French class. Maybe, I don't know. It's it's interesting because it's like if I could go back and take a, a French class now, I'd probably love it. 
but at the time, Zonk, not interested. <clears throat> yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, like I said, it was some booming, booming thunderstorm today. You know, maybe we should try to zoom in just a little bit more on these smaller flies. What do you think? I could zoom in, or I could probably just, uh, watch this. Hold on to your hats, folks. Actually, you know what I'm going to do so you guys don't get sick with the bumpy road, the camera adjustment. I'm just going to flip this. You can look at my crazy walls while I adjust, <laughs> while I readjust the camera. will be much more satisfactory about that. Alright, check this out. Let's check this out. Now we got, now we're cooking. Now is that I think that's a little bit better. A little bit better to see. What was her name again? The name of the fly. The name of the fly is a $3 dip. Uh, it is after the popular pattern at the $3 bridge in Madison, Wisconsin. I bet you I might be able to actually pull up an image. So how's everybody doing tonight? That's our basic $3 dip. Questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and drop them in uh, the chat. Um, yeah, we're doing good otherwise. Uh, hoping to hit the water soon. I, I'm sure all this rain is gonna, gonna really bounce the uh, Bounce the river level up. Haven't taken a look at that in a couple of minutes, but we shall see. Anyways. Oh, the French teacher on the second floor. Madame Piotr. Ah. You know, it's funny because it's like we, we went back. I remember we went back in... Uh, you know, in high school, they have archives of all the, all the yearbooks, and she was a high school alumni as well, same as ours. And boy, I tell you what, if I ran into her in the hallway, uh, you know, back in 1840, whatever, however, I mean, she was a dinosaur at that time. I mean, you know, I don't know, you're a high school kid, right? What do you do? Um, but no, it was like, yeah, we would probably would have been best friends. But anyways. Here we go. I have. We're pulling up pictures here, folks. That way, I don't feel like I have to rush too too fast through what we're tying. Let's see here. Where's my three-dollar bridge pictures? Here we go. All right, and I should be able to take my camera. I've been experimenting with this, folks, so bear with me here. Uh, oh my goodness. Scared the crap out of me, woman. <laughs> I heard, I, so my wife just walked by the room and she just said, bear with me, and it spooked me. <laughs> Hiya. Alright, so, anyway, so this is, uh, I don't know why it's all blued out, but maybe if I hit escape. 
We'll try this again. So you guys should be able to see this with me. This is $3 bridge over the Madison River um, in Wisconsin. And it got its name because there was a uh, fee to pay to park uh, to get access to the river. And uh, the fee was $3. I believe I have a picture of the pay box here coming up. Um, it was a great time. Uh, this was with a uh, Project Healing Waters outing um, back uh, in 2016. But yeah, it was a good time. If you ever get a chance to get out to Montana, get out fishing at $3 Bridge. There we go. So there it goes. Uh, to all $3 Bridge user sites, you have the opportunity to help with the maintenance and future development of this site by paying a voluntary $3 contribution per vehicle per day. Hey, you know what? That's, that's not too much to ask for. There's a uh, pay box. Envelopes. Put your money in the envelope and then you uh, just stick it in there. So... Anyways, we'll go back. We're here to tie flies, right? But yeah, that's just a little bit about uh, the three dollar three dollar bridge, uh, where we got the three dollar dip, and then you know this is kind of the uh, typical kind of basic. Uh, Ver, ver, blah, blah, blah. I guess this isn't the variation. This is kind of the standard, um, more or less. So let's go ahead and try and tie a uh, couple more of these. What do you say? Why don't you follow me over to the bench and we'll find out. All right, it looks like we got Dave is in the house. Good evening, Dave. What's up, bud? Um, I did get a hold of Mr. Claude. So we are tracking there. Hopefully uh, hopefully the weather will hold out, hold up for us a little bit. You know, these are little tiny guys. So you know what I'm going to do? So I need to find a cork. Sometimes I'll just take them and go right into the cork. And that way I can... Let them hang out and not lose them right away. So let's get a couple more of these cranked out. We already got our hook out. We're going to do another, another kind of standard, if you will. Again, I like to turn the hook up a little bit, opposed to having it um, down. All right, second verse, same as the first. We'll start our thread up front. Have it. How's that camera angle for you guys? Are we digging that or what? I think I think no matter what happens in the future, I I don't know. I I think if I can just nail the lighting down just a little bit better. Uh, what we have for our lighting situation. I'm always talking about my setup and what I got going on here because I'm always trying to think about and improve. And actually today I was watching on Hulu. My wife and I, we really like watching the uh, TV show, uh, what is it called? Uh, Holy Moly. And this is uh, the second season, Holy Moly, the sequel. It's a goofy, goofy putt-putt competition. Anyways, um, I was thinking about, or I noticed uh, the headsets that the guys are, the commentators are wearing, and I was just like, you know what? That's actually what I need. But the pair I got now will do me just fine for quite some time. Because it's a loogie. 
L O G I. It's I know it's a Logitech, but uh, apparently Logitech decided to rebrand itself as Lugi, L O G I. Um, but what do you know? I really like taking my time on my wires, on my ribbings. Nice and evenness. Here we go. Here we go. One last wrap. Hold that up, get that out of the way. See, the only downside is to having the camera this close. Although I get the clarity. Phone's literally it's so close. It's so close. I think we'll have to readjust. Push the vice out a little bit and then just zoom in. That's the old one, two. Too easy. In fact, I think I'm going to push that out just a little bit right now. I need room to tie. Let's go ahead and see if we can zoom in just a little bit more. I think that'll work. Camera one, pan up, thank you. All right. Super simple, right? A little bit of deer hair. Bit of deer hair. So I'll come in with my bodkin. And then I just take a little bit and flip it up, just like that. And then I can grab it and give it a snip nice and close to the hide. Bobbin swinging. I'm seeing a reflection off my glasses off of something else. And it's like nothing else is moving. I can't see anything move. And then I realize it's just the bobbin. Alright, what do we do with our hair? We clean it, right? Yeah, we got all that under fur out. Alright, so we want it to have some flare, but not way too much flare. Because if we tied it in way down here and bound down on it, it would really puff out pretty pretty dramatic. So we're going to come not quite at the tips. We'll say hasta la vista to those guys. See ya. All right, spin my thread counterclockwise, anti-clockwise, whatever wise you want to call it, to the left. That way my thread stays pulled to the left. Get around it once, twice, and we can lock it down. I like to go a wrap or two directly behind and I help keep it from twisting. Ooh, that's nice. Three dollar dip. All right, crystal flash. My friend. All right, lift and lower. Lift and lower, that means I'm going to actually lift up the thread. And I can lower that on there. And I'm going to slide that all the way to this side. I 
Sent those up, up kind of proud. I think that'll work. Ooh, I like this one a lot better than the first one. So that's the thing is, you know, it's like I remember how to tie a lot of flies. I've tied a lot of these flies. I tie a lot of flies. But it always, you know, it's like I sit down in the first couple I tie. You know, I'm not going to say they look like junk, but after a while, you know, you just kind of find your rhythm, find your groove, and uh, your flies just really, really, really uh, uh, just kind of start to take a, a life of their own and do their own thing. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Hello, Ben. What is going on? Just jumping in. That you're okay and we're okay. We're all okay. I don't think we had too much damage. Uh, last last week there was a big storm that came through the uh, Twin Cities. They got like six inches of rain and baseball size hail. How about that? Pretty intense. All right, let's check out a little dab of a solar res, a little bit of bone dry, a little dab of gluis. Doesn't take much. So today was supposed to be a relax day for uh, my wife and I, and she ended up getting called into work. So she worked all day, and I. Did my own thing. Took care of all the laundry. Yesterday was laundry day. Uh, so. Yeah. Played played some of my baseball game today and just kind of took it easy. Watch the storm come through. It's, it's crazy. Day thunderstorms. It's just amazing how dark. How dark dark it gets it's just like who turned off the sun and you know that's i've never been close enough to a, a solar eclipse um a total eclipse i don't know i wonder if that's what it's like all right experts professionals those who have tied the three dollar dip what say you i think that one's pretty good Let's give that a looksy loo. I know my dad's tied a few. What do you think, Dad? You got me on this pattern mm, quite some years ago. Let's go to this because I want to be in the camera a little bit. I want to be a little bit. I don't want to be a screen hog, but what do you do? All right, what should my next variation be for this one? Um, we know we like, uh, we know we like, uh, da, 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 da. oh, we should probably tie a couple smaller um, just for giggles and grins. So we'll, we'll step this down a notch and I think we'll be all right. We'll, we'll see, yeah, we'll step it down a notch um, size wise. Right now we're at what, 16s? I think we're at 16s. Yeah, these are 16s. I want to step these down just a little bit. And we're going to go down to 18 on these, and we're going to switch switch our threads up. I think I'll need a dozen for next summer. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got my... I actually got a little little bin right there. Flies for Montana. Some caddis, some ants. Um, actually, I had to. I dove, dove into that one a little bit um, for uh, uh, do the other serendipities. I'd have to see what's uh, serendipity is. Just what with uh, uh, I got the book. Well, we're gonna keep this. We're gonna keep this to three dollar dip variations. I guess a serendipity uh, would be 
See, now you got me thinking. Where's my... My book. It's always good to have your reference books handy. Let's see here. Serendipity. Is that in here? Yeah, serendipity. Page 60. Oh yeah, serendipity is basically like that, but just brown and gold. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do a serendipity real quick. Which is basically the same thing. Um, crystal serendipity and guide serendipity. These are all trout flies. Um, for those who don't know what we're talking about. Page 60. Oh, there we go. I, I, now, I now see the extra variations on the other page. Well, we could re-spool, or we could just go a, let's go a notch smaller on these next couples. Let's do that. We'll keep this to the ser or the, the, the serendipities, but to our three dollars, and then we might do serendipities next week. That's the thing, is I can't do too much too quick. Because we've got time. How many weeks have we been doing this? Who can tell me? How many weeks have we been doing um, special Project Healing Water Wednesday night live streams? How many in a row? I think this is like week 18, 19. Could be week 20. I'm not sure. Whoever can tell me that answer will get um, extra dessert at their next uh, lunch, on their le next lunch ticket. I'll make sure it gets stamped down there. Uh oh. You know the thing is, is if you tie flies, if you're if you tie flies at your bench barefoot, you tend to not lose any hooks because you find them quick, fast, and in a hurry. All right, so we've cinched this down a little bit smaller. Here we go, size 18. Actual size. It's about the size of the C. <laughs> Anyways. All right, I'm going to step this down in thread size from my uh, 8 aught to a 12 aught. Just a little bit smaller. And that's one of the things I discovered early on is tying small flies with big thread. It can be done, but um, things come out sloppy and messy and um, I guess one advantage to that is you really learn how to uh, really remember and work on thread management. Um, you really pay attention to that. Uh, one of the things I need to pay attention to is where I leave my spools of wire. So I don't think I have anything smaller than this for wire. I don't think I have a super fine or extra fine. Maybe this green might be, but I don't know, should be fine. that going. And again, I like to tie these on the near side of the hook towards me. I don't know why. It's just something I do. 
I'm going to pull this to the far side of the hook because you can't see it. Oh, look at that. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. at snizapped. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, folks? I silently swore in my own mind. Oh, boy. All right. That's the first time that's ever happened to me today. See, I always got to throw in the today because I'd be a liar if I said that's the first time that's ever happened to me. All right, we'll give that a try again. You know, and that's the thing is, how long have I been tying with this 12 out? I don't know. We could probably go back to instant replay, and we would probably see that I did, in fact, come in contact with the tip of that hook. So guilty as charged. Right? Nothing will break your thread faster than the tip of the hook. Easy does it. Easy does it. There we go. Nice and easy. Nice and even. Works for me. Looks good from here. Let's go ahead and work our wire up. We'll create a nice even ribbing from the rear to the front. Amazing what happens when you don't nick the thread onto the tip of the hook. Nice clean cut. I like that. All right, let's get our little clump of deer hair. And when I say a little clump, that's what we mean, just a tiny little bit. And what's what's neat about the deer hair is because of its natural taper, we can tie it in um, a little bit closer towards the tips, where we still won't get have to worry about that much flare. But as always, no ifs, ands, or buts. We clean, clean, clean. If you guys don't learn anything from watching any of my videos, it's one thing I want you to remember. Clean your hair. Clean that hair. All right. It's probably a little bit too much. All right, let's tie this in. Ooh la la, that's nice. See how we scaled back on the size of our clump of deer hair? It's because we 
went just a little bit smaller on a hook. It's all about proportions, my friend. It's all about proportions. Small hook, small thread, etc., etc. We've been using the same crystal flash. Instead of tying it in right in the middle of it and cutting the pieces smaller and smaller that way, we can just be mindful. Like I've said before, the frugal fly tire is seldomly bored, right? Just like that. I like that. And we'll finish this off with a whip finish. And that just broke off. Hot dog. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to just do another cast on a thread. Go up that head a little bit. Because I really can't say where that broke off. We know we got something over something, right? Right. All right. Little dab of insurance policy on top, and then we will know we are happy with it. You know where that's going? To where? That's where. Don't need much, just a little drop on the old bodkin. Set it and forget it. All right. So what else we got going on this week? Let's see here. Uh, the St. Cloud Fly Anglers. We're going to possibly do uh, two tentative float trips down the Mississippi uh, this weekend and or uh, next weekend. Super excited for that. Everybody gets in their little boats and we all float down the river. How about that? So there we go. That's the same fly in a size 18. Opposed to a size 16. Uh, we're losing control here. Bet you a thousand dollars I could catch a sunfish on that. What do you think? A couple casts out at the secret lake at the old practice pond. And I believe my friends at George, I mean named George, will just have a good old time. So there's that. Let's see what else we can do with these. I was thinking. I might have a little bit of different deer here that I thought I was going, yeah, died. 
This is... All right, we're going to try something different now. We're going to do it just a little bit a little bit opposite direction. We're going to need to go to our black thread. Let's see what do we got here? This is what size? This is an 8 aught thread. So we're going to start off just a little bit bigger like we did before. These are going to be on a size 16s. And just wait till you see what I got cooked up for this because this, this, this is going to be pretty sweet. Alright. We'll try one of these and then we're going to have to take a quick pause for the cause, I'm afraid. Alright, so here we go. This is on the size. What did I say? 16? Yep, size 16. Da, da, da. Gotta yoke that up a little bit. I like it. Alright. This is it uh, black Vivas thread. We'll start this up front. Just like before. And then we're gonna take our same silver wire. And this is just gonna be a color variation. Wait till you see what I got for deer hair on this one. This one will be a little bit funner. Not quite all the way up front. So this is actually kind of starting similar to the old zebra midge. Zebra midge would need a beat head on there, I suppose. What is that? Oh, fuzzy. Get off there, fuzzy. So who's got any big plans coming up? Any any lake adventures? I saw Josh had some pretty good lake adventures with his family. That was pretty awesome to see. Fishing is awesome, and fishing with family is awesomer. It doesn't get better than that. You know, it's just some of my favorite memories as a kid growing up were fishing and you know it's a family thing I mean it's it's something everybody can do and you know even if even if that's means you're the one person just kind of hanging out don't want to put the worm on don't want to do nothing this that or the other it doesn't matter you can still still send it still go out there and have a good time Am I right or am I right? All right, so here we go. Get ready for this. How's that for red, huh? Actually, it looks kind of orange because of the contrast, but I'll have to take my word for it. It is R-E-D red. And this is just a dyed uh, deer body here, so I know I'm gonna get a lot of flare out of this. And just like before, just a small little pinch of hair is all we need. Don't need too much. Save some for the next fly. And we'll just take a little pinch of that off. And just like we did before, big surprise, surprise, what are we gonna do? Gonna give that a little clean. Pinch down on the tips, give them a little twist. Because of the dye in there, it almost seems like that under fur really sticks. So we really want to make sure we get that nice and super clean. We're going to 
slim that down by about half. Don't need to tie them all in there, not all at once. Alright, we'll just tie those in on top. Let's take a wrap or two behind. I like it. Wow, could almost just throw a parachute around that, couldn't you? Ooh, what if we do that? Alright, we're going to do something different when we come back. What if we do a parachute? Well, we gotta trim this back first. I like that. Maybe just a little bit shorter. Oh, burn! I oh, I should have just left it. All right, check this out. We're gonna take to this, as in we're gonna untie. We're going to redo that one. Because that's our prerogative. So, road trip out to California. Going to do some fishing around June Lake East of Yosemite. Every time, I, every time I read Yosemite, I think of Yosemite. Yosemite Sam. All right, let's try that again. A little pinch of red deer hair. Now we'll get our smaller cut nice and even. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing is, is I really don't see myself flying anywhere anytime soon. Um, I had a trip planned uh, around 4th of July weekend to Baltimore, and I got credit for a flight, I suppose. Two tickets. But I really don't see myself going anywhere. <laughs> I need to flatten that out just a little bit. Fold that over and we'll match that. What do we think about the red deer hair on there? Black body red deer hair. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. It could be a thing. I think it looks buggy. I think it looks fishy. I think it looks fantastic. Alright, where did my bone dry go? We'll give that a little dab. A little 
Baba Gluia. Just a little bit of insurance policy. So I've seen some advertisements uh, claiming the UV these little ultraviolet boxes. You put your keys in, your wallet in, whatever in, and it um, it's supposed to kill the kill the germs with some UV light. So I guess my fly tying bench, at least in this general area, is safe from any harm. Here we go. There's a little black and red $3 dip. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I like the black and red. It's a little different. It's not, not exactly what you would expect to see, but I think we're going to do a couple more after I take a quick break. And then um, we're going to, I don't know, I want to do one more with the black and red. Because it's always nice to have at least a pair of whatever you're tying. And then... I believe I wanted to try probably some chartreuse. Either that or just black. Let's maybe we'll do a black and then we'll do a chartreuse. Or both. I don't know. We're going to take a quick pause for the cause and uh, we'll be right back for the second half of our program. So please stand by ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back.
we are back. What's going on? All right, so we're going to continue on with the second half of our program. Uh, tying up some $3 dippities, $3 dips. Um, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and slide on over. Pitter patter, let's get at her, right? Mm. Frozen fridges in the house. What's up? Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. All the way from Canada. All right. Let's get our hook in the vise. I think this is actually the size. Yeah, this is the 18, I think. Yeah. Yep, size 18. And we're going to do our black and red real quick. This is an 8 dot thread. We'll just make it work, I suppose. go after work a little after work chill time cool well thanks for tuning in see now I I, I need to send our buddy uh, Joe Bruno an email because I would actually like to get Joe Bruno to lay down a little riff or two uh oh hit the camera hit uh, play a little uh, riff or two so so I can uh, get some fresh Fresh tracks from my background while we do these live streams. Oops, let's try that again. We'll work our silver wire back. And up. Alright, just like before, we'll take our wire and we'll advance it from the rear to the front in a nice even manner. I like to put my finger on top. It helps hold it in position while I dance it around the tip of the hook. Okay, so we got to remember this is a size 18 hook and we got an 8 out thread just because I was lazy and didn't want to switch anything out. Although I did, I do see a different bodkin. It's got something loaded up into it. But let's go ahead and get a little bit of red deer hair. Don't need much, especially on this size 18. But we do got to give it a clean, right? Right. junk we don't want you in there perfecto Who 
Who saw that one jump out of line? I did. Toe to line, you toe to line. Crystal Flash. I lost that. Nope, oh, there it is. We're still working on that same original piece of Crystal Flash we've started with at the beginning of this tying session. Before we do that, let's go ahead and give this a quick trim. Nice and small little puff. I like it. Trying to do that any other way. Some big thread here, relatively speaking. Yeah, eight out thread on a 18 hook can be a little challenging, to be honest. There you go. I think that'll work. I like that. I really like that black and red. I think that's going to be absolutely hot on the water. Let's... Grab our solar res and we'll add a little dab of glue. There you have it. I like it. That's a good variation, I think. I haven't seen this one before. I haven't seen a black and red. I've, you know, I, I see black and red variations of a lot of different flies, but I don't reckon I've ever seen a uh, black and red tray dollar dip. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, nope. I think that'll definitely work. Let's see, where did we lose the other ones? Right up here. It's like a little convention. Let's see, I'd be a three, six, nine, twelve. That's fifteen. That's 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 a fifteen dollar dip right there. All right, let's go back up to our. Where did I put those? Uh, 
the size 16s. We'll jump back up to a size 16. We'll do a couple of these. And I wanted to do... You know I'm thinking chartreuse, right? You know I'm thinking chartreuse. I search for musical ponds to fish in. Awesome. That's awesome. What's interesting about these caddis hooks is look at their offset. If you go straight down the shank, they, they don't lay perfectly flat. There's just a slight offset to it. See it a little bit that way. And I guess the thing is, is about having background music, is I don't even get to hear it. Because if I turn up, for whatever reason, if I turn up my audio so I can monitor the music, it results with a echo for everybody else. It sounds like I'm in the middle of a space station wagon. Yeah, buddy. All right, um, we're gonna go down on our thread size. Oh wait, no, we're bumping back up so we can go back to our eight out thread. Ha ha! I'm a half a step of behind and ahead of myself at the same time. And, yeah, we're going to keep it the same silver wire, at least for this one. Let's go ahead and start our wire. And we'll tie that down the bend. We'll work our way back up. Keep that body nice and even. It's that simple. Flies do not have to be complex to be effective. Chartreuse. This is going to be fantastic. Because if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. I need to take my razor blade and clean up that hide a little bit. Sometimes I will clean up the hides that I... My deer hides... Get a nice close trim to cut off any excess hair that's close to where I'm working. Okay. 
I don't know. Just keep it looking nice. And this is some primo deer hair for, uh, this would be great for making some poppers and junk. Or maybe not so much poppers, but uh, other such flies. All right, remember we want to capture some of the flare. Let's go ahead and slim this down a little bit. We're tying it in tips forward, but we're not tying it in by the tips. I like the chartreuse. I really like the chartreuse. Why we haven't been doing chartreuse this whole time, I don't know. Alright. A little bit of crystal flash. A little bit of K flash. This aside and a little bit on of that aside. Oh no. I did it again. Rut row, Raggy. We broke our thread. You know what? I think we're just going to send it. A little dab of head cement. Be alright. What do you think? Chartreuses, and then we'll just take a few minutes and just kind of chat. Things, figure things out moving forward. Yeah, I really like the way that chartreuse came out. What do you think? Let's go ahead and move this one. I keep losing my cork. There it is. I always lose things when I put things in a place where I know I won't lose it. I think so, good sir. I like the chartreuse in black. Chartreuse in black, $3 dip. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? I know I didn't see that coming. Because I knew I wanted to tie a $3 dip, and we accomplished that early on, right? 
and then it's just a matter of taking what's established and twisting it just a little bit make sure it still kind of falls under the same realm and then do that again and do it again and again and again and again until we have something slightly different but still in the same ballpark what was it Buckminster Fuller says you you've never really invented anything until you've rendered the previous version completely obsolete so I don't know we're still always trying to improve always trying to move forward and I think most importantly at least for me is I'm always just trying to have some fun while I'm at it All right am I right or am I right Work you from the front to rear all the way down our little caddis curve. You know, it's just like how many different ways can you tie one fly? You know, it's just like you have a, literally an infinite amount of possibilities just in regards of color of material because you can tie, you know, there's such a variety of chartreuse. Such, there's 50 shades of gray, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Something to think about. There we go. Dave likes the chartreuse. And Dave is one of those kind of people. He's a fish whisperer. Dave knows because Dave listens. He listens to the fish. And that's that's key you know it's like I can sit here and say this and say that but what really matters is what the fish think right we shall see let's get our short true steer here So I guess this is what I was talking about. When I'm looking at my deer hair here, you know, I can see where it's really, really close. But I come right here at this section, for whatever reason, my deer hair is, it's like a mile long. But anywho, let's grab just a few few hairs and clean 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 These are going to be fantastic. Fantastic, I say. <clears throat> Crystal 
flash. Well, yeah, of course, Steve. Time on the water. Time on the water is the only time you get to listen to the fish. So, yeah, exactly. Um, let's see, where am I at? Because, you know, that's the thing. Because I, I love tying flies. And I, you know, my flies seem to work a lot better on the water than I'd like them to. Or than I can get them to. Um... Because I know it's not the flies, it's me. It's not the flies that suck. Can't blame the flies. But, yeah, time on the water, absolutely. Benchside theory can only carry you so far. I, you know, I think the chartreuse in black is going to be my new favorite. And I know the color's not really coming out as chartreuse as it actually looks. But, I don't know. You tell me. coffee and we're gonna switch the camera over to here so we can do a little FaceTime. There we go. How's it going? Well, um, what do we, uh, what do we think for next week? We should start thinking about that. Um, I'm... I'm thinking about, I don't know what I'm thinking, um, as far as patterns and junk. Uh, something relatively, I like to keep these, at least here on Wednesdays, Wednesday nights, I like to keep them, uh, I'm not trying to tie super complex, super over the top patterns, so if anybody has a pattern they would like to share uh, that I could look up and research and uh, help redemonstrate. You know, go ahead and you know, as much as they 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 work in the chats, uh, I I lose I lose where they are if I don't lo write down my notes. And I lost my notepad over this last week, so all my notes with what flies I wanted to tie, uh, my short list uh, has been misplaced. What can I say? Um, so after we're done with these live streams, I need you all to come back and leave comments. Say hi. Say hello in the videos. Uh, that way the YouTube algorithms uh, kind of help spit it out just a little bit further. Um, but I don't know. I always appreciate that big, that big thumbs up. I like waking up in the morning and seeing, you know, six people liked your uh, video. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure what the most amount of likes per video is, at least on my channel. It's not that high. 
Um, don't get too many thumbs downs, um, but YouTube counts them all the same, so who knows. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, I suppose we could tie one or two more. We're going to tie, yeah, let's do one more at least. And we're going to try, we're going to do a black on black, a black body and um, a black wing. Because I do have some black deer here sitting here, I think. Why, yes, this is Primo Deer Hair. This came via, let's see, Nomad Anglers. Who knows where Nomad Anglers is? Who can tell me that? All right, there we go. I'm gonna try. Uh, do a black on black. Isn't that a song? Black on black. Back in black. No, black and back in black. Black and black. Hack and sack. I don't know. Hackensack, Michigan, or I'm sorry, Hackensack, Minnesota, is home of, from what I understand, one of the best, the absolute best Thai restaurants in the state. It is a small little, I think it used to be like a gas station or something like that, or it used to be a bank, or it used to be something other than what it is. Uh... Stay tuned for Monday, Sean. Monday morning, we're going to... I got some ideas for some parachutes. Uh, Monday morning. All right, so if everybody, Monday morning, I'm going to be doing another live stream. And I'm going to be doing some parachutes, probably on some uh, kink, hammer, kink hammer hooks, which kind of give it the same feel as, I guess, kind of like uh, on these caddis hooks. But uh, they're kind of more designed as a dry fly hook. So stay tuned Monday. We're going to be doing another live stream. I guess it'll come out looking somewhat similar to these, but different. Hey, Dave, thanks for tuning in. Always appreciate you uh, when you drop in and say hi. Let's see here. Okay, we're back to our 16s. And we got our wire. And if you really want to get these down in the uh, water column quick, fast, and in a hurry, that's when you start adding bead heads to these. That'll help drop them in there. A little bead head $3 dip is the perfect addition to any hopper dropper combo. Pop quiz. Who knows what I mean when I say a hopper dropper or just a dropper combo? What do I mean by that? What is a dropper? Pop quiz. What's a dropper? I know I could explain it, but I want to see if uh, testing the knowledge. Now that Dave is out of the house, who wants to take a stab at it? Explain a dropper. I'm 
give you guys a few minutes here to do 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 get it all typed out. Okay, I was gonna go black on this one. Black, 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 black. So I guess this would be like the midnight, the midnight three dollar dip. Three dollar dip midnight special. I don't know. I'm sure, there's a pattern called the midnight special. Alright, we got the answers pouring in. Here we go. Fishing with additional fly or flies. The second fly behind the first fly. One heavier than the other. Two flies, one line. You betcha. All I would say would be a correct answer. It's just a two fly rig. Um, and typically when we say a dropper, what we mean is we'll typically have a uh, dry fly such as a hopper or uh, you know any other dry fly to keep your rig afloat and then tied off of that and whatever there's a million and one ways to tie a dropper rig hopper dropper rig um, and then you have it's basically fishing one wet one dry a dry fly on top and then your dropper goes underneath that and sometimes what you would typically see is um, uh, you know a dry fly wet fly combo of the same insect you know so it's like you're catching both you're catching the final life cycle or catching two two life cycles of the same same insect right so you might have the emerger on top or whatever you guys what I'm smell what I'm stepping in where we're going with this my words are not coming out right now but the intention is there that's a mean looking three dollar dip tell you that All right, little dab of glue. Where'd we go? Here it is. That's it. Some of the best flies are the simplest flies. I'd have to look. I, I don't think I've seen a blacked out like this. This is going to be some voodoo magic next year. I'm going to have to remember this. What do we think? I like the all black. I think that's going to be fantastic. So let's think about it. Let's talk about it. What are we going to tie next week? What's on the docket for next week? 
Let's get a let's get a game plan or at least a thought process going on that. That way I can have a little preparation. Silver wire, where'd you go? There you are. Whoa. I accidentally let go there. easy this is to tie once you get like I said once you get your rhythm you could really crank a bunch of these out if you were just take the governor off and just go 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 who listens to music when they tie flies I really don't listen to much music while I tie flies because usually when I'm tying flies, I'm live streaming. <laughs> That's my entertainment. Yeah, there's actually not that many flies that get tied nowadays around here that aren't photographed or live streamed or something of that nature. It's kind of kind of interesting now that I think about it. I'd never really thought of that. The camera is typically rolling when flies are being tied around here. If nothing else, just to kind of capture it so I can see what the heck I was thinking later on. Which sometimes is a good thing, which is sometimes it kind of makes you go, hmm, what was I thinking? size that's usable. And the only real trick is just to make sure it stays on top. Drift flies 82. I just put on my Pandora and go bananas. I don't listen to much Pandora. I think the only time I really listen to much Pandora is actually when I'm uh, driving. And when I'm driving, <laughs> you want you want something fun? Go to the Pandora music machine box and. Uh, turn on the Dick Dale surf music surf channel and oh my gosh if you don't get a speeding ticket or feel like you're just driving at a million miles an hour listening to pipeline or wipeout or surf melody oh man that's like ultimate speed right there you don't even know It's either that or I'm blasting NPR, Minnesota Public Radio, 
WMPR. Birthplace of public radio, right here in the great state of Minnesota. Did you know that? Uh, there's a lip finish. Yep, I, I don't I don't drink alcohol while I'm tying flies often. I might have a, a an adult beverage once or twice, but that's not a, a go to thing for me. I like my coffee. Some people can't handle their coffee. Some people can't handle their adult beverages. I'm a coffee guy, what can I say? Not going to bed till I'm tired anyway, so what do you do, right? One last little dab of head cement. And that's going to be it. I'm either listening on Pandora, I listen to uh, Dick Dale, uh, surf music, I listen to uh, the Wu-Tang channel, and I listen to the dub Jamaican ska radio. That's about it, but I don't know. I think we did a fantastic job today with some variations and some variety because we got the traditional we've got the black and red we've got the chartreuse and black See if we can't do this without hurting ourselves. And it all starts so simple. There you go. All right, that's it, folks. All right, well, we are going to just go ahead and leave it at that. We're going to wrap it up here in just a couple minutes. It looks like my uh, other lights turned on. I'm going to have to adjust those. Those lights kick on automatically like 10 minutes before sunset or whatever. Half hour before sunset. Anyways, um, yeah. Next week we'll do something. I don't know what it'll be. Stay tuned. Um, so this Monday we'll be... Uh, I think I'm going to do some sort of... Uh, King Hammer, Parachute, King Hammer, something or another's with uh, some deer hair, Parachute, something or another's. Um, and next week for Project Healing Waters, I don't know, something will hit me. Uh, maybe we'll uh, do some panfish. I think maybe it might, it might be panfish time. I'm looking at my fly boxes behind me trying to get some ideas uh, leave comments behind uh, after this uh, video gets out there 
do me a favor hit that thumbs up button uh, share this video if you care about it um, sharing is caring uh, the more people that watch these videos the higher they get bumped up in the queue list and you know I work real hard at this and um, it's a lot of work and we'll uh, we'll get these videos out there one way or another um, if not they'll always be out there in the archives so anyways uh, tune in next week uh, let's see Monday from 9 o'clock about an hour or so um, and then yeah next week Wednesday so thank you all for tuning in thank you all for watching stay healthy everybody stay safe happy tying yeah sure you betcha tight lines peace